In a universe populated by monsters, giants, and larger-than-life beings, I was determined to find my own path to the top of the mountain in sports entertainment. I wasn't gifted with superhuman size or strength, but I did have an insatiable thirst to learn, the physical gifts to take to the air, and an uncle who was more than happy to give me the tools needed to become one of the greatest competitors to ever lace up a pair of boots. Starting my career in Mexico, I'd be known first as La Lagartija Verde, which means the green lizard, and Colibri, hummingbird. Still a teenager, I would eventually earn the highest honor from my uncle, as I was officially crowned Rey Mysterio Jr. I would take everything I had learned from my uncle and make it all my own. I would bring Lucha Libre to the world stage. I would make cruiserweights as popular as our heavyweight counterparts. And I would prove that a cruiserweight could win it all, as long as they were given the opportunity. I would arrive in America, first stopping in ECW, before garnering the attention from the top people at WCW, who quickly signed me to a contract. With my foot in the door, it was just a matter of time before I took over the world of sports entertainment. Every step, a battle. Every opponent, a new face who felt they were superior to me. Every match, giving me a new objective to strive to meet. Should I try to weaken their legs? Throw all of my aerial techniques at them? Maybe surprise them with some defensive lucha libre? Take it to the outside? Show off my newest move? By the time I got to the ring, I always had a little mental list of things I wanted to try in order to win. And with every victory, I got another reminder that the best was yet to come. After winning WCW's Cruiserweight Championship, Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship, and the World Tag Team Championship, I would finally head to WWE to further build my legacy. In the near 20 years since I debuted in WWE, I have become known as quite simply the greatest luchador in sports entertainment history, the greatest mass superstar of all time. Ray is the king. Having competed against every big name possible and having defeated nearly everyone that stepped in my way. Not every road is paved with gold and mine was no different. But even when the road gets challenging, there's always opportunity. The opportunity to learn from mistakes, to grow as a competitor, and to get better. I may not have had my hand raised every time out, but there's never been a time where I didn't leave the ring better than when I entered. The memories behind the infamous match of Halloween Havoc 1997, which I truly believe is a match that put me on the map. I was a big fan of Eddie growing up, so to be able to forward all these years and then eventually share the ring with him was incredible. It was an honor for me to face one of the Guerreros. Overall, that match was highly important for me. The fact that I could become Cruiserweight Champion that night and defend my mask, not have to be unmasked. You know, that was something that was really in the back of my mind. I just didn't want to go through that. They were trying to take off every luchador's mask one by one, and I was on the list. So you could only imagine the stress that had built up. And for us, luchadores, it's a very prized possession. You know, this is something that I've carried since 1992. We both know, Eddie and I, what the mask means to us that carry it. So he knew what was at stake. I would never give him the satisfaction of taking my mask, never.
Shot sent on that Eddie always does. It's beautiful to see when you're not on the receiving end, but it sucked being on the other end of that sent on. And seeing him taunt me, you know, it kind of boosted me up. It fueled me up to keep going during that match. I've sat and watched that match. I actually watched it not too long ago with my son, Dominic. And it's a match that I still learn from. And, you know, it's a match that doesn't get old. I truly believe that if there was no Eddie Guerrero, my career would have gone a different direction. Between Habit Clash, Eddie and I were on better terms, but still found ourselves unable to resist the friendly competition in WWE. Holding the WWE Tag Team Championships only drove us to wonder who the better man on the team was. We both held victories over the other, but the chance to meet at the showcase of the Immortals, WrestleMania, was something we couldn't pass up. For the first time ever, two tag team champions would go one-on-one -on -one at the grandest stage of them all. We both knew what this match meant to the other, and it's what made it so fun to go out there and try to take the glory for ourselves. With no hard feelings, of course.
Guerrero has passed away. Eddie was in the prime of his life, 38 years old, the prime of his career. So tonight, we celebrate the life of Eddie Guerrero. The toughest thing about this day was what we were all living, what we were going through. It was hard for us to accept that Eddie was no longer with us. Everyone was hurting. I asked myself, what would Eddie have done? And Eddie was all about the business. Whatever happened, show must go on. I did expect to wrestle Sean one day, just not under those terms. One of the greatest legends in WWE history, he has a lot of respect for this business and for the superstars that are up and coming. By Shawn Michaels asking me if, if I had the energy and the courage to have a match against him that night, he didn't have to choose me. But he did, because he knew that Eddie would have loved it. That speaks of the type of human being that he is. Losing Eddie was one of the most painful experiences in both my personal and professional life. The WWE Universe came together to pay tribute to one of the most respected and beloved superstars of all time. This was a difficult night for all of the obvious reasons, but we wanted to put on a show that Eddie would be proud of. I found myself in a rare one-on-one -on -one match with another living legend, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Of course, I wanted to win for myself, for my fans, and for Eddie. And while Shawn was also grieving, I knew that he would still give me everything he had, just as Eddie would have wanted.
Man.